What's up guys, Eric here, Mr. Fired Up Wealth, bringing you a quick video today. I'm gonna to compare three different ETFs for semiconductors. Now, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I own SOX. I use it in my retirement account. I use it in my taxable brokerage. But there are two other good ETFs that you can explore. So it doesn't mean that SOX is necessarily the best one. And I'm gonna break these down for you. You're gonna to wanna to see this video, stay tuned. All right, guys, so the first one I'm gonna do, the first comparison I'm gonna do is SMH versus SOXX or the SOX. Now these are the two most common ETFs that you're gonna see in semiconductors. And this is just from ETF uh, comparison. You can type it in, it's ETFDB for database.com. Um, there's, there's a paid subscription and then there's a free service. I'm just using the free tool right now. You can see the SMH is the VanEck uh, Vector Semiconductor ETF, and then the SOX is the iShares. Now, part of the reason I always use SOX is because I've been with Fidelity for a number of years, and before before Robinhood existed and before you know everything was free shares, you used to build a dollar cost average into the iShares. Anything that was BlackRock iShares was no commission for quite some time on Fidelity, so I tended to use those um, those ETFs to save on the commissions. Now, if you look you actually notice that the expense ratio is a little bit less on SMH than it is on SOX. It's 0.35% for the SMH and it's 0.46% for the SOX. Um, other than that, they're pretty similar. I'm gonna look at the holdings and you'll see the difference there in a second. For shares outstanding, there's 15.6 million on the SMH, there's 12.1 million on the SOX. You know, in terms of volume, you can see, you know, the SMH is really, the more popular, you, if you look at the volume, it's got quite a bit more volume, 3 million versus 671K. So the more popular, the most popular by far is gonna be the SMH. That's the one you're gonna see most people use and compare to. Um, if you look at the performance, this is where it gets a little interesting and I'm gonna go to this other page here too. So this, this shows you a pretty good breakdown um, on this website called askfinney.com. Now this shows you a nice breakdown if you look, the dividend yield, the SOX is 1.39, the SMH is 1.59. You say like, well, it's a higher expense ratio, it's got a lower dividend, you know, why not go with SMH? And that probably could be the case if I were to start today, and you know, like I said, I, I started investing in SOX because of the ETF being free at Fidelity with BlackRock. You know, maybe if I were starting over new, I might go out with the, the SMH, but, but hold on. If you look at the year to date return, you can say, okay, well, this is actually performing 1% better, pays a better dividend yield and has lower expense ratio. But if you look at the five year return, now the, the SOXX actually has, you know, one, you know, 1.35% or whatever that number is over 1% better on the SOXX versus SMH. But then you look at the 10 year and they're pretty close, but the, the SOXX actually wins again on the 10 year return. So it gets a little bit tricky. They're both passive, they're index based, but they're different indexes. But the index, so the indexes are very different. If you look at the underlying index for SMH, it's actually gonna use the MVIS, US listed semiconductor 25 index. Whereas if you look at the SOX, it's using the PHLX semiconductor index. So they are actually different indexes, even though they're both passive. So, you know, you have to explore that on your own, decide which is better for you. Now, the other one I wanna show you that I don't talk about a lot, you don't hear quite as much, is gonna be the XSD. Now, the expense ratio on XSD, that's the Spider S&P Semiconductor ETF, the net expense ratio is 0.35%. The 52-week performance is 41.34%. Um, if you look at year to date, it's actually at 19.5%. 97%. So year to date return, it's actually doing even better than the SMH. So this is the top performing stock if you look at year to date return. And what's interesting about this one is the breakdown of the holdings. Now, before I get into the breakdown of the holdings, let me just show you really quick the holdings on the SMH versus the SOX. So this is where it gets really interesting because it depends on the underlying companies that you like. All three of these are very different, especially at the top weightings. 
So if you look at on the left hand side, you've got SMH, there's 26 holdings in there. So there's 26 stocks in the ETF. The SOX has 31 holdings. Now look at the difference though. Taiwan Semiconductor is almost 11% weight versus the top holding in the SOX is Broadcom with 8.4%. Now SMH also has NVIDIA at 8% versus on here at 7.93%. Intel is at 8% here and only 5.78. So you could, you could argue like if you don't like Intel, you might want to go with this other, well, this SMH over SOX because of the breakdown. You can see on your screen, if you look at the top, the top holdings at SMH, you've got Taiwan Semiconductor, NVIDIA, Intel, ASML, Qualcomm, Texas Instruments, Broadcom, Micron, LAM Research, one of my favorites, AMD, Applied Materials, ADI, which is Analog Devices, NXP, Semiconductors, Cadence, KLA. Now, if you go to the next page on that, now you start to see the Skyworks that we discussed in the last video. You see Marvell, you see Corvo. So Skyworks is a little under 3%, Marvell is a little over 2%, Corvo is 1.78%. Now let's look at SOX. We got Broadcom, Intel, Texas Instruments, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, Micron Technology, Taiwan Semiconductor at 4% here. Um, let me go back here so you can see the comparison. Taiwan Semiconductor on the left side is 11%. On the right side, it's 4%. You got LAM Research, which is a little bit lighter actually on SOX. ADI is 4% on the right. It's 4.39 on the left. You can kind of go through NXP. You know, some of these are very similar. But now you've got Marvell at, on the SOX is 3.28%. And it's only 2.19% on the SMH. So that could be good or bad, depending on if you're bullish on those. You know, Skyworks is 2.99 versus 2.96, so about the same. Corvo is 1.85 versus 1.8, you know, 7.8, so almost the same again. But now the, the SOXX has some smaller ones in here, like Lattice Semiconductor, Brooks Automation, uh, Slab, which is Silicon Laboratories. So it's got some of those smaller ones. There's even some Cree in there that you're not gonna see in the SMH. So they have some of those smaller caps in there that sometimes help them outperform. But honestly, if I were, if I were to make a decision just based off, off of what I see today, and I, if I didn't own either one of these ETFs, I would probably lean towards the SMH. And that's part of the reason I'm making this video because I, you know, I own socks and I've been you know, buying socks for a while. I explained why. If I were starting fresh, you know, I would make the decision as an investor which one I like better based on the index because they are very different. You know, the Taiwan Semiconductor, that's a very good company. You know, of course, it has more Chinese risk, you know, too. So there's that that there. Um, but if you're not worried about the Chinese risk, it's a long term hold. You've got, you know, Taiwan Semiconductor is a great company. NVIDIA with a higher weight, not by a lot, though, 7.93 versus 8.04. I think one of the big the big differences, you know, Qualcomm is 8% on the right side versus 5%. You've got Intel on the SMH is 5.7% versus 8%. You know, some people could say Intel is cheap here. That's a value. So that's a decision you have to make on your own. Now, the last one I want to show you, this is actually really interesting because it's something that I don't really, you know, cover really at all. But it's, and of course, it's at an all-time high. So you know, be careful with, you know, how you buy this dollar cost average is up by 2.83% today. A lot of times semiconductors lead up and they lead down. So semiconductors might perform well and the rest of the market will be performing well behind it. And when the market starts to turn, a lot of times semiconductors are the first to get hit as well. So something to keep in mind, because right now the NASDAQ is up 1.59% um, and the XSD is up 2.83%. So let's just look at the holdings on this really quick. You can see the expense ratio. In fact, I did a SOX comparison. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick SOX comparison here. And then, you know, we can look back at that uh, Fidelity page as well. So this is really interesting. So SOX. Now Broadcom again is the, you know, so SOX now is on the left-hand side of your screen. And then this new one that we're talking about is on the right-hand side. It's XSD. Now, their top holding is monolithic power systems and then Cirrus Logic and then SunPower and then Micron. You know, NVIDIA is 3.3% versus 7.9%. But here's where it gets interesting. And I honestly, a couple of those stocks up there, I'm not a huge fan of personally, but I want to give the information to you. You make your own decision. Here's where it gets really interesting though. So Corvo is 3%, Skyworks is 3%, Lattice is 3%, Xilinx is 3%. 
you've got a lot of really good companies that are kind of mid cap that could, you know, have some growth in there and very different again now, completely different. These are going to have a lot smaller, you know, kind of mid cap type holdings that could potentially grow for you. You know, you're looking at this again now, Broadcom is 2.9% on, uh, on the right hand side on XSD versus where was Broadcom on this other one? Broadcom was the, the main holding at 8.4%. So huge difference here between the two. This has you know a much bigger percentage of on semiconductor. It's got things like first solar solar in there. It's got Semtech, uh, Synaptics, some really interesting ones here. You know, like Diodes Inc., uh, Max Max Linear, Rambus. You know, some of these companies I don't even know a whole lot about. So definitely something to explore, guys. There's three ETFs here. Let's just look really quick in Fidelity too. Um, I want to just so there's 39 holdings in this. And this third one we're talking about, this uh, XSD. I can't even remember the name of the ticker because it's something I just haven't talked. So XSD, you can see Monolithic Power is the first. And it's even got um, DSP Group, Smart Global Holdings, Siva, Ramba. So some of these might be a little different from that, that database. I probably trust the Fidelity information more than the other one. But you can see for the most part, they're the same. It's got the Monolithic Power, the Sun Power, but there's some interesting companies in here. Um, you just really have to make the decision on your own. Hope this video was helpful. Just a quick breakdown of the three ETFs. Now, if you can't do ETFs, if you're in Europe or in different parts of the world where you can't do these ETFs, what you have to do is find the stocks you like and make your own mini basket, your own mini ETF. Looking through the holdings of ETFs will help you make that decision because you can figure out companies that you might not have known about before. Like you could look through this and say, well, what is, you know, what is Semtech? What is First Solar? And you could actually go do some due diligence and, and look for companies that might interest you that you might not know about before. So even if you're not able to buy the ETF, this type of research and due diligence is helpful. Hope this video is helpful overall. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell to get notifications. If you haven't checked out Facebook, we have a free Facebook group. You can go take a look at that and apply. We also have a Patreon if you're interested in that and a Discord group. Take, just Google Patreon plus Fired Up Wealth and you'll find it. There's actually a promotion going on right now and there's three seats left. So if you're, uh, if you're quick on the ball, you might be able to make it there before those sell out. But I hope you uh, have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Take care.